Kia ora New Zealand. In your bulletin today, a meeting between the Māori Party leaders and the Prime Minister probably won't happen until next week. It'll centre on the interim recommendations of the Waitangi Tribunal that the asset sales process be delayed until they come down with a final report in September. John Key says they're now looking at the Tribunal's report. We'll need our guys to look through all of the recommendations, what might happen next, the timetable, the implications. All of those things will be considered properly. Um, we're not feeling stressed by anything we've seen. And the blueprint is out. Now $30 billion has to be found over the next 10 years to rebuild Christchurch's CBD. That money will come from central and local government, insurance companies and private firms. The Mayor of Christchurch says buying the land needed for the new facilities outlined in the central city blueprint will be the first step towards making it a reality. And the Pike River families say they are done with Peter Whittle and will leave it in the hands of the courts. Peter Whittle was due to plead today in the Greymouth District Court, but it was adjourned for a third time until October the 25th to give council more time to examine the evidence. Family spokesman Bernie Monk says Whittle isn't in their thinking anymore. I'm over Peter Whittle and, um, and I'm going to let the, um, the courts and everyone else deal with him and the families are going to move on from Peter Whittle. And three people have been taken to hospital after a gas leak in Christchurch this afternoon. The fire service got to the call around one o'clock and cordons were put in place by police around the leak in Mowbray Street in the suburb of Waltham. Three people were taken to Christchurch Hospital for gas inhalation. And a fire service spokesman says the cordons have now been lifted. He says they cannot say what type of gas was involved or what caused the leak. OSH have been notified and will be investigating. And a referendum on gay marriage is being called for by New Zealand First. Leader Winston Peters believes a select few elected politicians should not have the ability to make the decision on such an important issue. Mr Peters is refusing to say exactly how his party will vote on Labour MP Louisa Wall's bill, saying it will not vote for it, but that could mean either abstaining or opposing it, and Mr Peters is refusing to clarify. Well, the fact of the matter is you'll have to wait and see because we are putting up the option of a public referendum where everybody in New Zealand gets a say who is a legitimate voter and we'll see what the response is before you tell you anything more. And there is a new Miss Universe New Zealand. North Shore 23-year-old Talia Bennett is now wearing the crown after Avianca Boehm was stripped of its title. The South African-born 22-year-old is no longer eligible after her application for New Zealand citizenship was denied. And to London now, where there is a question mark over some incredible swimming from 16-year-old Chinese swimmer Yi Shi Wen in her individual medley race. The young swimmer broke the world record by a second and beat her own personal best time by five seconds. And she even swam faster in the freestyle leg than American male gold medalist Ryan Lochte. Rumours have spread that to improve by such a margin seems unbelievable. However, Olympic organisers have said it's very sad that an unexpected performance would be surrounded by suspicions. And it's back to Eton Dorney for a handful of New Zealand's top medal hopes tonight. The men's double, Mahi Drysdale and Ebba Twig, are all in the first quarterfinals of their respective events. All three crews should progress, but Twig should get a far better gauge of where she's at as she takes on Aussie Kim Crow. Mark Todd can join a special group of New Zealand Olympic legends overnight. Todd is eyeing his third Olympic gold medal in the three-day eventing at the London Games, currently sitting in third, heading into the show jumping stage. If successful, he will become just the fourth New Zealander to win more than two golds behind Ian Ferguson, who has four, and Paul McDonald and Peter Snell, who have three apiece. Ka nui na kareri matua, mai te whare kōrero o rima. Maori order.